Hi, so in this section we're going to talk about grammars and application best practices. I'm going to cover grammars in more depth in a couple of following sections, but for right now I want to go over some best practices about grammars. Now, grammars are describing or will contain the, call, the caller's answers to your prompts. And that has to represent what the caller's going to say pretty much exactly word for word. So the more open-ended a question your prompt makes um, causes your grammars to become more and more complex. So they, there really is a very large dynamic between what your prompts are saying and what your grammars will contain. And the simpler the question you ask, or the more um, direct the question you ask, the simpler your grammar can be. Now, there is the idea that you have um, a local grammar, and the local grammar typically is trying to take care of what the caller is going to say in response to your question. You also may have what's called a global grammar, and this global grammar will handle what callers may say uh, as far as um, navigation or trying to escape from a situation that they didn't mean to go into. So a caller might say main menu or might say live operator or operator and uh, that will push the caller um, to a different location or different part of your application. So that's the difference between local and global. Now, additionally, your grammars may contain uh, phonetic variations because a speech application has an idea of the way people say things such as, say, San Diego. Um, but let's say San Diegans had a, a different way of saying it, and they might just say Diego. Well, I might need to add just Diego in and not just have San Diego. Now, the next idea is that uh, your... Um, the grammars want to cover what the average person will say in response to your question. Not what anyone could possibly say, but what most people will say in response to that question. Because what ends up happening is your grammar represents um, a guide to the speech application. And the more words you have in your grammar, the more chance you have for confusability. Okay, so what do I mean by confusability? Imagine I was designing an application uh, that was all about uh, getting and leaving voicemail messages, okay? And there was two commands. One was a command to um, get the voicemails, and the second one was to leave a voicemail. And so if I make those commands, get message and leave message, well, those, in, in effect, are very, very similar words. There's a lot of confusability in there. Um, in the fact that they both end with message, get and leave are... Um, are of a, of a similar length, and if, for whatever reason, any part of that gets, gets clipped or garbled, well, there's a very good chance that one may be swapped with the other. Imagine, though, that if I chose instead to say, uh, check voicemail and leave message. Well, now, those are completely different. It doesn't matter if a little bit get, gets garbled, because they're so different that the confusability is very, very low. Now, the same idea happens if I try to take my grammar and I add everything that someone could say, whether in jest or uh, being kind of a smart aleck or whatever. Um, if I add everything in there, I have a very high possibility that I'm adding in confusability and, in fact, will mess up the 95% of the people that are trying to use your application. What happens is, often, um, you'll have someone that will say, okay, I'll test your application. The thing about testing the application um, is that People who use your application are trying to accomplish a goal. People who are testing your application are trying to break it. I can break any application I want. In fact, I could break a touchstone application because I could simply mash the keypad. And then if it actually then responded with a menu, I could say, well, look, I mean, it, I mashed the keypad. Why did it advance along? And so I said, well, why don't you try pushing one of the buttons that you're supposed to for the menu, and then you'll see if the application works. The same idea happens with speech, but for whatever reason, again, this kind of goes back to an earlier uh, section. People feel that speech applications should be artificially intelligent, and in fact, they're not. They're programmed with um, appropriate responses to your questions. And in fact, um, to a certain degree, um, this kind of comes into testing practices. Now, first off, um, you may test your application and it works great. Right? You design it up, when you say this, it goes here, um, and everything works like you expect it. But the true test of whether it's a good speech application is to have real callers use it who are really trying to accomplish the goals that this application is, is there for. Um, it's these people that are trying to interpret your prompts, say appropriate things, so that they can get the job done. Now, um, what ends up happening with this is um, 
you'll find that, in fact, these callers will find problems that you didn't know existed. Because you as a developer did your best to predict when you ask a question this way, callers, callers will, will respond in a certain fashion. This is the prompt and grammar. But what we'll find out is, in fact, that we're a little bit off from what we expect the callers to do. And callers will find the problems with your application. Now, the worst case scenario is that you make a very, very complicated, very large speech application. You've never had a real caller try it out. And then you roll it out to the public, at which point then the public finds all of your problems and they're all over the place in your application. And so now you're faced with a very, very tough decision right now. You know you have problems. They're all solvable once you figure out what you need to do. But in the meantime, people are using your application. And, the, and because there are problems in your application, they're losing confidence in your application that this application or any speech application will help them accomplish their goal. And in fact, you, you lose buy-in. More and more of those people that are trying it are really just trying to press zero now to get out to a live operator without trying your application. So the idea here is that you could roll it back and fix everything to the best of your ability and then roll it back out. Or all along, you could have been producing um, small versions of your application and having it be tested by real people trying to use it in an appropriate fashion. And in that sense, you're getting a, that exposure ahead of time and having those problems found ahead of time. Um, and this is what we call tuning, right? Um, it's this idea of I expose my product, people try it, I then study the results and I figure out how I need to change it to make it a better application. You'll find, in fact, in, in most cases with most speech applications, Half of the development happens after your initial deployment to a caller, okay, to the, to the caller base. And um, there's really no solution to this because it's a part of the process. So be prepared for it. Now, um, as a reasonable set of guidelines that will guide you in this process is you want to keep your application simple. Make it more complex later, right, after you've tested your theories. Because the more complex, the more time you've spent on, say, a single dialogue to make it just right, only to find out that it doesn't really work for callers was effectively a waste of time. Keep it simple, make it more complex, introduce that complexity um, in stages. Um, you want to try to adapt the ap application to the caller. If, for example, you have some dialogue, and really the callers are having a hard time with it, Resist trying to give the caller more instruction and really look at adapting the application so that you make the question easier. You might split that question up into two or three pieces, so on and so forth, but you want to adapt the application to the caller. Don't try to force the caller to use your application when they find it awkward. And again, I just can't stress enough that you deploy early in tune. Um, thank you very much. The next couple of sections we'll be talking about grammars, uh, Thank you very much. Bye.